Good morning to you all. And first of all, uh, we changed lang language. We're doing this in English now. Uh, actually, Brillavox has a sister series called Supervox, uh, a pod, which is uh, aiming uh, for an international language. So we sort of switched a bit with Anne. <laughs> uh, and she's used to you used to live in New York, so, so you're okay with with another language, I think. That was ah. a long time ago. I lived there. So oh, <laughs> oh or we'll do it in Swinglish. <laughs> yeah, uh, we do it in Swinglish. Yeah. That's good. Uh, so I'm so grateful all of you came this morning. It's gonna be great pleasure. I I, I told someone I think it's gonna be a bit rowdy because uh, Annie is here uh, and she could be be a bit rowdy. Uh, we first met at at a sad or at a funeral that that actually for me became something more of a beautiful it was a beautiful beginning yes. of of learning to know another person so uh, it totally changed the situation mm -hmm. and uh, I'm so glad we met yes me too cuz now we're sitting here yes and we're going to talk about you <laughs> and I'm going to start by reading the wikipedia about you that Anne, uh, so uh, so, she was so nice to show me this uh, article. Um, so it says Anne Olofsson, born 12th of January 1966 in Hesleholm, is a Swedish artist and photographer. Olofsson is educated at Konsthögskolen in Oslo, 1990 to 1994, and was on the cover of the Scorpions. Vinyl, <laughs> Virgin Killer. So that's your claim to fame. We'll, we'll yeah. start there. <laughs> that is that is really hilarious. Yeah. Um, it was actually also an article in the Rolling Stones, um, San Paolo version, that uh, about uh, that I was. That it was about the Scorpions album, but suddenly they also wrote about my exhibition at Kulturhuset 2011. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> so it's it's out there. And uh, so now I'm at the cover. Um, it's funny because also what is funny is that I made a lot of. Uh, I'm, I'm working in a. Uh, it's a long work about this cover that started 2011. Uh, uh, continuous work, but uh, so I also know that this girl who is in the cover from 1976 um, is uh, totally anonymous. You can't find out who that person is. It's very well covered up. But now everybody knows. So I don't have to look for it anymore. <laughs> Super. I'm a bit surprised myself. It's, it's a good start, actually. I, yeah. I love that Wikipedia. Yeah. Uh, and since it's on Wikipedia, it's the truth. Yes, absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, so questions? Yes. I'll start with some others that I wrote. Um, have you defined yourself as an artist with a specialization in a certain genre? And I, I know you're a fantastic photographer, but uh, you're also impressed with your sculpture and 3D art. And is there a genre which, which occupies your more of your time nowadays? Well, first, I'm educated at the Art Academy in Oslo, and I was at the sculpture department there. Hmm. At the time where you were supposed to carve in stones, otherwise you got big problems. Oh. And I uh, really didn't want to do that. So I started out really early at the sculpture department to make uh, installations and work with photography and video. But I always had this kind of 3D dimensional feeling in my... I mean, you, you can see that in my photographs also. It's very three-dimensional, even if it's like two-dimensional. Uh, um, but then... So I started to go back, in a way, a couple of years ago, to work with uh, sculpture again. And then, of course, the 3D uh, technique has developed very much. But it's also like I have to... I wrote this down because it's like it's very complex, I think, also, to work with 3D. Because it's almost like... It's almost fake. You have the feeling. It's, it's like AI. Uh, so I also try, when I work with 3D, that to combine it with very analog and physical material. Mm. Uh, that I then include in a way in the work, so when it comes out, it doesn't it doesn't look so 3D in a way. Okay. Uh, so, but I, I like the technique, but I like to develop it into more not 3D. It's hard to to describe it. But, yeah, yeah, um, yeah. 
but, uh, but for me also when it comes to photography, the 3D uh, is also photography, since you really print it out. Mm. And you can see that in some of the sculptures I made, that I don't polish them. Um, I let, let the finish be there. And it's very much like... Um, like you, you see this, uh, uh, the, the Swinglish come now. Yeah, um, that's okay. We're doing that. Circle in trees. You have this feeling of like it goes layer on layer, a little mm. bit like you print out the photography. So I don't find it very different. I, I think it's medium that is very similar to photography. So I, it, they merge. It's sort of a flat 3D. Yeah. Nice. <laughs> a lot of merge work. <laughs> what does your creative process look like? Um, it's very much in my head, um, very much. It's like I have this little, I always say that I have a little studio in here mm. um, with small doors, <laughs> many doors and many rooms. <laughs> and, and, and I have these bags at home filled with uh, like sh chewing gum papers and uh, uh, post-it notes and because I always constantly get ideas yeah. wherever I am. It's just like blah, 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 constantly. And I, have to, and I write it down and then I put it in these bags and, uh, and then I place it in, this, uh, in here, in this uh, studio, in different doors. There goes that, there goes that, that. It's really like that. Mm. And then it's, um, it's like a carousel of uh, slides. <laughs> and, um, but then, then suddenly, because I really, I, I really don't need a studio. I have a studio, but it's more like a, like a warehouse. I just put things there. And, but then it, it goes around and then suddenly maybe all these bags of ideas and stuff goes together into like 100, 50, and then it goes down. And then suddenly after a year or so, there is these works that need to be done. Mm -hmm. uh, it could be then different, uh, like a video or installation or photography, but then it's finished in a way in the, in the factory the yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> in here. Uh, and then I try things out and then I start the process of making the work. So wow. that is uh, how it is. But sitting in a studio, like, they, that doesn't work. Uh, no. So you always seen the work like before? Yeah, but a they year, always develop. A year ahead. Yeah, but it, of course, I see it. But then when it's, uh, when it's in, the, in the process of making or doing it, it doesn't look like that anymore. No. It looks different. And I also like that it's, uh, it changed during the time and it's, uh, all the mistakes comes and you realize that, wow, this is more interesting or so. Mm. But that, that's how it works. I, I realize that now. I mean, it's the same process all the time. I'm sort of envious. It's like a mind castle. Yeah. <laughs> could you so let I, us I can, I'm always in my studio. Maybe you could let us in sometime. No, but it is like you, oh, I'm always in my studio. I yeah. mean, it can sometimes be a hard thing to be because you... It's you seem to be here right now. Yeah, I am, but, but I'm also it's in here. <laughs> okay, good. <laughs> I always think about the you know, ideas and stuff, so that's, but it's, it's good and bad. Nice. Uh, was there any decisive situation when you realized that now I will devote myself full time for, for your art and what feelings that did that bring up in uh, you? No, but I, since I was a child, I've always been, uh, you know, drawing and doing things. I mean, constantly, all the time in school and uh, it, man, it was just a forever situation. But then, of course, you go to, I think the when you enter the art school, I think my first art school, you know, pre-school, two years, is more of a playing around. And then you, you come to the art academy and it gets more serious. You realize that this is really, you know, I'm here now. But then I, I guess in my case it was when you realize that this is something you're going to do, is I think it came with working with the bigger gallery in New York, which I did in the beginning of 2000, um, that you realize that you are now stepped up and, and this is what I'm going to do. And it's actually also a possibility to live on it. You can, mm. I can actually work with this. So I think that, that when you really enter a scene where it's very serious, where you have people working for you, mm -hmm. doing the things for you, and you, that I think is uh, very much what, when you realize that this is, this is what I'm going to do now. So I think so. What, that, what did that bring up in you? Was it emotion wise? Well, quite good because I can't do anything else. Oh, great! <laughs> <laughs> what could I do then? I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> That's your what I wanted to do all my life. So I guess, and also the education is there. So I guess doing something else would be a disaster. Yeah. I tried when I was younger to even be post uh, driving the postcar. Nice. It, I crashed. It doesn't. It doesn't work. Ah. 
Because it's on the steering wheel is on the wrong side and stuff like that. <laughs> yeah, probably. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and I actually also worked with slicing sausage in um, when I was younger, and I also you know got a, it. Did, it didn't work. I, I kind of tried to wash it and it didn't work. No, so. sausage is hard. I can't. I can I can only do art. Ah, uh, yeah. Much simpler. <laughs> yeah, than slicing sausage. That's it. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Uh, so I was wondering also now you've come so far in your career uh, and from the beginning you've been like a dark horse or like something that a person that not so many were knowing about and uh, yeah is there anything in in these different periods in your career span that is uh, has been extra fun and something that has been extra challenging yeah i think the the fun part i mean there is a i, I was lucky i think as an artist um, in my generation because it's something happened with the nordic art scene in the beginning of 2000 i mean okay. it was we were very popular in the world mm. um and um i was doing i had this small very nice gallery called shop Sundberg, and uh, we went to liste it was like a small art fair in the big art fair in basel oh it was very funny i mean it was a great time um, all the gal small galleries from Sweden were there, and we we played flipper at night, and it was, it was a fun scene. Yeah. And uh, also that it started out that uh, you know my, my work was you know f photography then interesting for it was American collectors, and and then I got this New York gallery, and it was like a, a, a time where th things happened, and also that you had the possibility to to come abroad, uh, which I think is much harder today. Mm. I think it's much harder to uh, become an international artist today and than it was like at that time for for um, you know in the Nordic countries. I mean, a few artists can do that, but I think it's more at that time it, we were, had that kind of there was an interest in it, a very big interest in it, and it was um, th there was this possibility to do these small fairs, not not only the big ones. With the mm. economy was like super. Then it was it was like a. There was this little house, and um, and I remember I also started working with a very funny gallery called Jack Hanley, uh, who was situated in San Francisco, and uh, he's the last hippie um, dealer on in, in on earth, more or less. And um, <laughs> but he was really he had the eye. He picked up artists. He didn't really work with them forever. He just picked up artists, did shows, and then he was also. Um, uh, they told him because he was started working with big artists, and then he, they asked him to be in Basel, the big fair, mm -hmm. and he started there. But he quit, <laughs> and then he got in a way like lifetime at least because he wanted to be there. He wanted oh, yeah. to have that kind of a low core, more you know, not so much the hype international uh, money world. Playing flipper at night. I think that's yeah, doing yeah. that, and I think that's a few of them, and I like that. I think that was uh, fun with him. So. Yeah. And he's still around. He's in New York now, but um, but also, I mean, if you said being extra challenging, it's also always extra challenging to be an artist. I mean, economy-wise, you know, mm -hmm. uh, you always struggle with um, with money. And um, I remember, I mean, you see this uh, figuring coming up in porcelain. Mm. Um, it actually started. I, this, is, this was from 2009, so I guess it was in this period when I went to the art academy to get papers. At that time, okay. you had to go to Konst Akademi and pick up papers to apply for money, ah, for the scholarships. Yeah, you know? yeah, yeah. And that was, it was lunch, so I had to wait outside at Fredsgatan. Yeah. And then uh, the director, I can't remember the name right now, or I, maybe I shouldn't say it, came by and he knew me, yeah. he recognized me, okay, and yeah. he said, and he just said it, Anne. Are you here begging for money again? Wow. And I was like, No, no, no. Did did he really say that? <laughs> I was like, did, and it was so like, I don't know, the feeling of like, yeah, but this money is for the artist. We yeah, are supposed to, to apply for those money. Yeah. So I guess in that round this sculpture came along. Ah. So I guess it's always a little bit of a of a, a challenging and a struggle because you you never know. I mean, you, as an artist, I think in your entire life, you're I think it was Mama Coin Anderson who said that. You're in the sun very few times. Most of the time you're in the shadow. And mm. then you're in the sun. And then you're in the shadow. It goes like that. Dut, dut, dut. And the age. And then suddenly you're becoming popular again. And then you're in the sun again for a while. Then you're out. 
Okay. As you see it now yeah, these I, days, I, you look for older women artists, they come back in mm. the scene. I can and then see they're going to be out again in a year or two. I can <laughs> see the challenge. <laughs> yeah, it's a yeah, challenge yeah. To, to, to be there also as an artist, I think, in the world. Should we talk more about the porcelain? Well, well no. no. No, we'll continue with another question then. <laughs> yeah, exactly, there's so many. Okay, your works are now all over the world. And it's from MoMA to uh, Asia, and it's... Uh, I, I can't really name all the places. You could, but I can't. But is there any, like space or, or place with, with your work in it that you feel extra like this is the perfect situation to have your work in yeah i think that's because my father died in uh, 2013 and um, quite uh, well young he was 69 mm. and i think it was i can't remember exactly when but then th there is there is a work that comes up here with my father where i unbutton his uh, shirt and uh, and then that, one of the works, but that work uh, then um, uh, is now at, or has been now for many years, since his death at MoMA in New York. Mm. And I think that's kind of nice, uh, in a way, the feeling that he, he don't know it, but he's there, mm. in a way. He, he is there. Wow. So it's not only the work, but, but it, my father uh, is in New York. So... Yeah, in, so, in since the, you left you New York, him. he's still there. Yeah. yeah, so I think that's nice. I mean, he's yeah. probably in a warehouse somewhere. They don't show the works all the time, but... But it's, it's, <laughs> <laughs> but it's still somewhere in New it's York. It's still there. <laughs> <laughs> Lovely, yeah. Do you find it p difficult to part with your works is one of the questions. Or more specifically, do you recall any situation where you like handed over something that you had problems... Yeah. No, I, 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 I rarely have problems with, uh, with the part. I mean, I always, if somewhere else, I think it's kind of nice to, the work is uh, now with, uh, somewhere, and then I, do, I st continue with new works. But there is a situation which I had, this is a funny story, I have to tr try to tell it fast, it's almost pos impossible, but uh, I was down in Orlando in uh, America, um, and I was invited with some friends to um, collectors mm -hmm. that uh, I didn't know that they had my work, but obviously they had. Okay. And, um, and it was in this gated community, really weird place. And this, and they took the couple. They, I don't know. They were they having a lot of dogs, and they were living by a lake where there was um, uh, crocodiles and stuff. Mm. And they were totally hysterical. And then the guy said, suddenly said, "Anne, come out! You have to! I have to show you something." And he was like totally hysterical. And he ran up, and I after to the ne next floor. And then and then he opened the door like, Shh, "This is my playroom." And I was like. Playroom, okay. <laughs> and then it come in there, and there was a lot of like gaming machines, and there was like a pool table, and a lot of other shit. And then there was this uh, like a strange uh, chair in, in leather standing there. And then one of my like really special photographs was hanging there, like on a little bit like this on the wall. <laughs> and you go, oh, that's your work. Yeah, isn't it great here in this in my? It's a very special room here, and it's, your work is there. Uh, and I was like. <laughs> really? Uh, wow. And I was like looking at that chair and you really wonder what he did in his chair. And, it, <laughs> and I, the feeling was, of course you couldn't, but you really wanted to like, just like chick, grab it and then like... <laughs> but it was a gated community, so I wouldn't get so far. But, uh, okay, yeah, yeah, no. <laughs> but no. I was really f feeling, that was the only time I really felt like this guy should not have that work on his wall. Oh. <laughs> but, uh, but, but luckily they mm. got poor, I guess, so they sold the entire oh, collection. Yeah. And um, and then it, it actually Orlando Museum of Art bought it. Oh, so now it's there. Whew. Did they buy the whole room so they transferred? <laughs> exactly, no. that would be a nice installation. Yeah, installation. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know what the, the, the English word is for sneezgun. No, uh, and me neither. <laughs> what Tilted. is that? Tilted. Tilted. Yeah. yeah. Um, but that was the only time when I really felt like that work does not belong in this house with these people. It should not be here. Yeah. But uh, it did. So finally, it went to a museum, <coughs> which good. is very good. Yeah. No, but it's was, a funny story. I was actually thinking because, like, I feel so strong when when I see your works. It's a lot of emotions and it's a lot of like 
you build in a lot of stories especially yeah, and, with your father and especially uh, that work was uh, that kind of work that definitely should not be in that room and i mean other works could be but not that yeah uh, so it's not anymore okay. and they electrocuted their dogs also because they could not go down to the with the lake with the yeah that's how it worked there okay <laughs> So that's the way to put down a dog. Yes, so yeah, uh, I didn't want to be have that work in that house. That's a story. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> you spend uh, a lot of your time in New York. Is that something uh, that shaped your art history, or uh, and also the social parts of the art scene? Do you feel like? Belonging more to the New York art scene or to to the Swedish art scene or <coughs> Stockholm art scene, or is, is that something that has consequences to your career in Sweden? Um, I mean, first something shaped your art history. Yes, I mean, of course it it did. I well, I was there for many years, and um, but I also um, I came there the first of September two thousand one. Oh, uh, so then I I experienced nine uh, yeah. eleven. Um, very close. Rough start. Very close up. So it's, um, of course, and then I actually did a work a couple of months later in Sweden uh, that I had to do because of that happening. I have to do that. And that is a work I that comes here somewhere about pain and um, how it affects you. Uh, but I also think that living, I mean, I went to Art Academy in Oslo. I lived there for many years. Then I came to Sweden. Then I went to New York and I lived there for many years. And that is also a little bit problematic in Sweden, that you're a little bit of an outsider, but you're not, but you are. Yeah. Because you didn't go to Mayan, you mm. didn't live here enough, long time, to be really mm, part of the art world. But I mean, now I am, but it took many years um, to realize that, that you see also other artists that's been educated in schools abroad, that yeah. it's, it's harder. Yeah, because I feel some some artists have like Stockholm as a base and they they work there and they, they it's a natural habitat hmm. for you you you're as you said more of an outsider yeah you feel, i mean because it, i mean for, since i lived abroad for so many years but now I, this is my hometown but i also know new york by for me it new york is i know this town very well um <clears throat> even more than i do, do stockholm the mm. streets and all that stuff but um, but it's important also that um, it's, a, it's a typical, I think, Swedish thing that it's, if you're not educated here and if you're not like very part of the art world, it's, uh, it's more, you have to work harder. Yeah. yeah. I recently read that somebody said that being an artist is also about being like 20% in the social arena or something like that. And yeah. I think that's what I'm aiming for in my question. If, if, if you found your home in Stockholm and as a social arena. Yeah. I mean, it's... Um, now, I mean, that maybe the last, since now I lived here for a while, yeah. it, it became that more. Mm. And, um, but as, as I said, it, I mean, like since my studio is in my head, it's everywhere. Yeah. Um, and I don't find, the, I think that the entire art scene has become a little bit, uh, I don't know what happened. I mean, I was, um, it had Jaspis in 99, mm. where Donia Biamba was the director and it was hilarious. Um, Maybe I was younger, of course, but <clears throat> but I also wish that it was more um, would be more not so nervous. I think sometimes the Swedish art scene is very n nervous. Okay, yeah, I mean, it's hard to describe, but it's a feeling. I was gonna ask you about Norway now, yeah, <laughs> because you spend a lot of time there at the Royal Art Academy in Oslo, and where you were educated. Do you still have? A lot of contacts with Norway, and if so, what is best with the Norwegian art scene nowadays? Well, I don't have so much contact anymore with Norway. I mean, I had um, uh, one of my professors. It, it comes later, who kind of saved me from uh, from uh, the male teachers at the art academy. Um, she don't live there anymore. She lives in Berlin, so I don't have so much to do with Norway anymore in that mm. case. But um, and <clears throat> but they have this great system, for example, for a studio loan, study loans. Yeah. That um, if you are educated at an art academy, you only have to pay back ten percent. Oh. They, they realize that you are not able to uh, pay back anyway. <laughs> so I think that's so ten percent is better than nothing. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I think that no, but I think the, the scene is again. It's 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 not so it's not so nervous as I said it, it uh, here. It's less. Um, I mean, they're more. I I don't know. I think the. There is, I don't know why it is like that, I, that I can't tell, but and of course there is more money, mm -hmm. um, there is another economy. 
um, with art. I mean, for example, their working scholarships uh, in Sweden is 100 uh, and something kroner. In Norway, they are almost 300 something. Oh. Uh, that's a working scholarship, I would say. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, gets you. Yeah. The reason why I asked is uh, I ha had a conversation with one of the uh, guys from Accelerator, and he's like, in Oslo, it's a lot of things happening and with the positive vibes and energy mm. that we talked about mm. earlier. So that's it. Let's change. Is there any dream installation or exhibition uh, left that you want to do? <laughs> Uh, well, I think it's, it would be funny to be like these m many male artists that they had run factories. Yeah. I would also have a factory. That would be nice to, mm -hmm. to have like a huge factory with a lot of assistants. And uh, I don't, there is no women artist more or less. That maybe Marina Abramovic has yeah. a certain kind of, but not really a factory. Many m male artists have factories. And uh, that would be good. Um, so I can, so I can make. I mean, all these things that in in the studio yeah. would be nice to make, um, and that takes economy and you know place. But of course, I mean, who who doesn't want to have an exhibition at MoMA or a, you know bigger place? You know, to mm. do something like a, where you can actually also have the the financial situation where you can make things uh, that you can actually you know. I want to do that, and if you do that, that yeah. would be nice. And a lot of assistants. That would be nice. Factory <laughs> At least assistants. One, one assistant. I, I would love to. <laughs> okay. I, would, I want one assistant. <laughs> that would be perfect. Uh, is there any teacher or someone you worked as an assistant for who has meant a lot to you and how you work as an artist? Now I never worked for as assistant for another artist, but I, I had a teacher, like I said, uh, at uh, the art academy who, um, who came in as my savior because I, it, it was hell during uh, the, these years. I had two male professors in the sculpture department that behaved like, I mean, this was m very before me too, and it's okay. kind of obvious as well. Oh. Uh, how they were treated you as a woman and uh, in this um, very male department and uh, it was very it was so bad that i had to um, because i got an exhibition very early on at the museum in germany uh, already in the third uh, grade okay but then i had to leave because i couldn't do it there because they were so worked so much against me because mm. i was supposed to do this show so I, had, I, I took one year in New York, and then my one of the uh, women, very nice woman, Berit, at the um, at the office, she uh, helped me to, so I could be in New York, not at a school, but still get study. I mean, don't say that to SCSN, but um, so I could <laughs> I could be in New York working on this exhibition and still was be in school. Yeah, uh, even if I wasn't. Um, but then, before that, I, I went to Stocke, who is this uh, well-known uh, Norwegian artist. She came in. And uh, I had her as a teacher for, uh, for a while. Oh. She was fantastic. So she even arranged so that fixed me a flat just beside of her flat, so we could watch some funny shows on television on Friday nights. Oh, nice. Yeah. So I mean, but she she was uh, fantastic, and she made it um, for me possible to then go back and then to do the fourth and final wow. year. Wow. Savior. Yeah. Yeah. But it was heavy. But it it actually um, my elbows are. Yeah, yeah, I learned yeah, yeah. how to survive in a school situation like that. Tough. Yeah. Okay. Good. Yeah. I, 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 before we, we did a, uh, an interview with uh, another artist, and, and she mentioned like two other artists, upcoming artists, that she wanted to like lift up. And I don't know if you have any names or anything that we <coughs> look at more um, from from Anne's perspective. That's interesting. Yeah, but I I was working 2000 and uh, not two years ago, but ten years ago. I worked with um, as a professor, like visiting professor at the, the art academy, Mayan. Mm. And um, and there I met uh, one student who uh, really had problems with, I mean, the school, and you know, the, she was stuck in something that she need to be a little bit released from, and and um, and we talked a lot, and um, and uh, now she's uh, doing well, Linnea oh. Um and so we, I became like a mentor outside of school, and I'm still in a way that we talk sometimes, and. Um, 
And I think that she had that kind of a spark and energy and uh, as a new, you know, who, who can, who is very interesting, I think. Nice. And uh, also I was working with, um, I had Suda Eva Mag and uh, she was the same class. And we also talked and you, you can really, it's so funny to see the, the development of these two artists, how they, you know, they in, unsecure in the art school and, uh, and now they are like blooming and are really interesting artists, both of them, I think. Absolutely. Yeah. Good. Now we're going to talk about your work for Statens Kontrad, Joint Custody. Oh. Yeah. Are we already there? <laughs> we, we are in the finish, yeah. So, so we're, we're actually doing good because um, we, we need to also let the audience. Yes. I, I can't do all the questions. No. But uh, can we please talk about joint custody? Yeah. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so that, that started in your mind castle? Yeah. No, but it, it didn't really start there. No? Uh, nothing starts really there. It starts outside, then it, it comes in there. It's kind of... Now, it was my father who died uh, again, 2013, and then as the only child, I had to um, take care of that. This, this is a really strange situation, mm. um, where you, you open the door to a house, which you no normally don't go in like that, and start to like dig in, yeah. in my father's things without asking him for permission. You feel like a thief. Mm. It's very strange. And... Um, and then I don't know what to throw, what to keep, what to sell, what to, what to, what to. And then uh, there was this small uh, porcelain figurines from Kungligt Danskt mm. that are very strange because they're so like in themselves. It's almost like, you know, these children or mothers and fathers and children that are very introvert and, um, and that, that people in a way, instead of having photography or painting, they have these sculptures as a thing in your house to, yep. you know, for some reason, and a little uh, cloth under. And I was really like fascinated by these figurines. They're fantastic in many ways. And I have someone has painted them and made them. And I guess they are made from, I mean, not a fantasy or a picture of a child or something. And then I kept them. And then I, um, I actually then later on also made sculptures, uh, my own sculptures uh, based on these figurines. But uh, this was a photographic series with um, with some figurines and then. A human being, uh, like a real child, mm. uh, because at m my daughter's uh, preschool there was this child that looked like this figurines. So I was really kind of, <laughs> my God, <laughs> she had the same skin and the same haircut, and it was like, oh, wow. it was very strange. She was almost like this pre, maybe she was the, like in her le former life, one of these models. Mm. So then I asked her parents if I could uh, use her for for taking this photograph, and I also went then to. Um, I had to make this outfit that she had. It's, it's really hard to find exact color and uh, shape of the material to make these clothes yeah. uh, in a tailor. Um, so that took many, many weeks to find this exactly the same on the yeah, color and everything. So I did, <clears throat> finally. And then uh, they went to this tailor and a woman who do things for uh, opera, the opera house. And she made this small outfit mm. uh, with a and the shoes and the stockings, and uh, so I put on this little girl. So it's strange when you look at the, in, in the works, because it's, um, you, you, you first realize after a while that one is not a porcelain figurine. Yeah. It's uh, because she's so similar to this, uh, the fragility of, uh, of her, and also this, what these f f figurines are, or, and was in the past for many people. Yeah, it's amazing. I, I love that. And they part. have no value today. It's incredible. It's um, they they were very valuable at the time when I guess my grandmother bought them, and now you buy them on Pradera for like uh, two hundred kroner or something. It's, yeah. um, it's strange. That's weird. So I have a lot now. It became a, became an obsession. <laughs> my, my home is like, oh, well, we take that another day. <laughs> yeah. So we started to talk about this talk like half a year ago or yes. something like that and then you were telling me about your book that is was going yes, to the be book. the book was going to be released but now it is released. now it is and so it's there and sandra the publisher she's here yeah to buy the book for a super price it's almost for free i would say uh do you sign books i sign books yes wow what, what do you sign them with lots of love yes no good <laughs> lots of love i don't know <laughs> Well, I don't know. I would write something if they want to. But uh, no, but it, we worked with this book for many years. Of course, the COVID came and, and the, that was not the time to... First of all, we, we, it's printed in this fantastic uh, printing um, 
house in uh, Milano called uh, Nava Press, Rotolito Nava Press, which, I mean, they, they print for uh, Gucci and Prada and they, with these UV uh, machines which make it just pop everything. It's fantastic. So me and Sandra, we went there uh, to look for all the, I mean, we, we, all the intakes we were there looking at the, the photograph being printed. Then we went back to the little office we had and then back and back and back and back. Uh, so we, we put a lot of time and effort and uh, love in this book. And uh, when we thought okay, COVID, two years, it's like we couldn't go to Italy first and then you don't want to give out this super book when nobody's really interested in doing anything anyway. Mm. So it took it, its time and I, I'm glad in a way because it's, I mean, if you work with a book, you can work forever. You have to stop at okay. a certain point yeah. because you always want to change things and oh, we can do this and we put in this. But now it was like, no. Now it, now it has to come. Sandra was like, now we have to, it have to go out now. And I was like, okay. Wow. And, uh, but it's, I'm happy because it's a book about uh, my works, not all, of course, but uh, many. And yeah. it's almost 300 pages. And uh, it's, uh, it's almost like an art piece itself, uh, I think, more than just a book about my works. Because that's how the Sandra did the design. And um, it's, um, it's, pretty, it's a very nice book. It looks fantastic. So today you have the chance. Yeah. We are nine o'clock. So uh, this is actually our third year anniversary. Ooh. So you, you... I get the prize. You get the prize. Yeah. No, it's been fantastic to have you here. And, mm -hmm. and like, it's been a bliss, especially talking to you and, and, and this three years. So we're really looking forward to, to do more of these things. And we're coming back in February 23rd. And then we're going to talk about with some other artists, uh, street art with Tarek Saleh and Akai. Mm -hmm. So it's totally different. But it, it, you're all very welcome, of course. Um, and we do would like you to listen to our pod. We recently released a pod, uh, pod, pod with uh, Tal Air. Mm -hmm. And uh, he's a funny guy. Mm -hmm. uh, you remind not as funny. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know if he, he could talk with his stomach, but he, he's, he's a funny guy. Yeah, and and, and we also had an episode with, with uh, Alex Israel, which is really fascinating, and soon releasing a third one. Uh, so it's a lot of things going on. Um, but that's it. And I brought a signature pen. Did you? Yes, I did. So everybody. Line up for the uh, signature. The yes. book, you could, you could leave it. I I'll take the books. <laughs> <laughs> no, but thank you for having me. It's okay, a, it's thank a you so much. This has been a dream. Yeah. Okay, thank you.